Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLAS TV Africa. Uh, first conversation, it's on the Anambra elections. We'll go straight to the conversation. Now, Aineke is saying they are prepared to have this election come the 6th of November uh, 2021. And let's not forget that there's a seat at home order by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, which started, or we should start on the 5th of November through the 10th of November. However, IPOP is saying we have not called that the election should be, uh, there should be a boycott of the elections. Now, uh, on part of government, uh, the president is saying we need an overwhelming presence of security in Anambra state. Of course, we've also seen deployment and redeployment of, uh, you know, please personnel across uh, to ensure that that elections happen. So this would be the crux of our conversation this morning. We do have a guest who's joining us uh, all the way from Abuja, Upunab Bonkutaria. It's good to have you join us this morning uh, on the show. Good morning, Nancy, and good morning, Beard. Okay. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Let's go straight to the crux of this conversation. Do you think, of course, INEC is saying we are ready, uh, everything is ready for the elections. We have deployed resources, the manpower, the material, and what have you for the election. But the question here is, do you think INEC is ready to conduct this election, free and fair, come the 6th of November? Of course. I, I have a conviction that INEC is fully really prepared for the conduct of the Anambra governorship elections. Uh, but what I can say for sure, with all amount of certainty, it's uh, whether it will turn out to be the, a referendum of the people's will at the end of the day where results are announced. I make it prepared, but given the precariously convoluted situation, atmosphere in Anambra State, um, orchestrated by the federal government, and first time by the seat at home order by IPOP, a lot of people will be scared to come out. Because we all know what has happened to all those that have come out uh, for one reason or the other. I just learned that even yesterday, or the day before, a security, what are these people calling uh, uh, these people, these local security men, one of them was shot there on his way to the market to make some purchases for his family. So if you talk of free and fair, I think it's ready, I think it's prepared for the conduct of free and fair elections, not just in Manambra, but in any part of the country. That I am sure. Uh, but if not, the election is the reflection of the people's will, that is a different world them altogether. Because I don't really think an umbrella will come out on that day to cast the vote. And so the governor that might eventually emerge might be a legal but an illegitimate government and that might stir up more crisis okay uh, but there's also some concerns about the fact that you know voter to some point voter registration uh, suspended but due to some circumstances that we are in the know of so i mean looking at all of this uh, are you sure that we're going to really have it very correctly I, I thought the voters' um, registration, there is a resumption of voters' registration. Is this still, a, 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 is this still a, a suspension? I don't think so. I sincerely, I don't know. I'm not too sure of that. But whatever it is, that's what I'm saying. That's why I say it is precariously a convoluted situation. And I have a belief that for on the part of INEC, yes, but on, even if you talk of voters' registration, how many people will come out? to renew their voters' registration or to get registered. You know, a lot of them, there is this fear. The air is so filled with so much fear. And so nobody wants to risk his life just for an election that a lot of them believe, even in a, in a uh, serene environment, might not be a true reflection of their will, of, of, of their expression. So I, I, it is not a good beyond INEX the voters registration exercise and it has to do with how many people are ready to come out and register and also cast their votes that is where the problem is 
Okay, um, let's move away from that now uh, about the preparation of the elections and the fact that INEC has given the assurance that the elections uh, would hold calm the 6th of November in uh, Anambra State. Let's talk about the seat at home order that's been put out. Now, there's also another angle to this. IPOP is saying we're not asking the people to boycott the elections. Uh, but there's a seat at home or there. But with all of this, do you see people turning out for the elections? What are your expectations? What do you see? You see, the Ephraim thing most has been created. And sadly, uh, it is as a result of the braggadocious attitude of the federal government. The lack of fact, lack of intelligence in addressing this issue. Uh, let us take the Ogoni issue, for example. Ten Sarua was killed how many years, decades ago? Yes, Shell is finding it difficult to go into a good land for explosion. Certain fights, certain revolutions go beyond the starters, those who started that revolution. If you read Ernest Hemingway, where he said, it's a, it's, a, it's a literature book, where he said, a man can be destroyed, but not defeated. It has gone beyond Inandekan. I can tell you that if today Inandekan decides to renounce IPO, he will be killed by the same members, and the IPO struggle will continue. And that is because of the poor handling by the federal government. So it has nothing to do with the IPO situation. So and a lot of people are being deluded by the fact that most Biafran come on air to condemn Inam de Kano. In secrecy, they are with him. Because when we had the Niger Delta, uh, the militancy struggle here, I know, I can tell you exactly what happened. Those who went on air to say the militants, they are condemning that we are secretly sponsoring those militants. Because they believe that Inam de Kano is out is a symbol of their struggle. And that somebody has the gun on today to come out and ventilate their view. So most Biafrans are happy with the name they can. You can imagine the Biafrans sending a former governor to go and represent them in court. So this has gone beyond in name they can. It has gone beyond IPO. It is like the June 12. Abiola symbolized June 12, but it was a struggle for Nigeria. So this is a struggle for the Biafra. And because of the poor handling by the federal government. So it's not about uh, whether I thought, say, don't sit at it. They have always said, in the Kano never, he, was, he has been in detention. Did he ever speak from detention? He was not allowed to speak from detention. But yeah, look at what is going on. So in the Kano cannot even stop this moving train anymore. He cannot stop this moving train anymore. What do I expect the federal government to do? Why are you always inviting bandits? I want to defend bandits. Allow him to challenge even the president on the issue of bandits. Yes, it will not allow the evil leaders to have access to him and the country. You are just testing the situation. You are proving to the people that you hate them so much. That is the truth. So it is beyond him and the country as we speak right now. It is beyond IPOP as we speak right now. That is what is good. And that's why when IPOP comes out to disown the seat at home, you still find out that the evils. Because, and those of that criminal element are also exploiting the situation. Criminal are also exploiting the situation. You can, you remember a, man, a boy who killed his own father for going against the effort. So the situation is beyond IPOP, it is beyond the number of That is the truth about it. Okay, so, but do you think that the elections would hold? I wouldn't have, I don't know. <laughs> you asking me to foreshadow. <laughs> I don't know the election will. I pray because uh, it's a conundrum. If it doesn't hold, it simply means the federal government has capitulated or the federal government has been overwhelmed. And no government will want to be overwhelmed by any form of insurrection or whatever you call it, or revolution or protest. No government anywhere in the world, no doubt about that. Then, if it goes on, Either of this will happen. The people will sit at home, and so only INF will go, and at the end of the day, will pack their materials and everything and leave without any election. Or the 
in our free bloodshed. Because those that will come out of power that will attack at those that are in the city So it is a very, very precarious we say control. And this is because, like I said, the federal government failed in its intentions of the the federal government so I put like Guari himself said it. He said it like a drop in an ocean. How can the president make an inflammatory statement? On daily basis, you learn more burden on the remembrance of the aircraft. What they went through during the Civil War. Why will you be doing that? And you, I believe that when the president and his cohort were going about trying to destroy Biafra by all means, they forgot that there was going to be an election. A day like this will come. It's almost like a drug reckoning. So if you ask me, I, I, I will not proceed down here to proceed. Because either of those will happen. The uh, Biafrans will sit at home. When I mean Biafra, I'm talking of the East. I'm not a Biafra. The Biafrans will sit at home. Because I'm, I'm from the rest of the Biafra. That's one disagreement I've been in the country for another day. Anyway. So the Biafra will sit at home to avoid being attacked. Or those that will go out, what kind of security are you going to talk about? So are you going to say, how many you sent how many, you militarized the whole zone. You sent how many security men, personnel to that place? Let us see what will happen. Don't forget that there was a major state function. I think it is hopeful of them as state function. We are invited the president. And people did not come out, apart from his own cronies. Apart from his own official do, people did not come out to receive the president. Look at bank, every institution obeying the seat at home order. Even when I thought it disowning that order, obeying the seat at home order. So, how do you explain this? How are you going to go about it? Just because of one stupid arrogance or hatred you have for people. This matter would have been nipped in the board, it would have been addressed long ago. Long ago. Let's talk about the cost. Okay. Oh, you give Gumi everything, all, all, all the advantages. Even without the federal government in plan, in premature, Gumi was going to visit the bandits and was challenging Mr. President on so many others on bandits. I probably declared a terrorist group. But these real criminals and terrorists are not declared. Rather, they are granting them amnesty. What kind of manacle celebration and change in this are we talking about in this country? Every spirit we vote are tired of when a man is pushed to the wall, he bounces back with a double left. That is the truth. It is the truth with a lion's den now. Messiah is challenging. You will never believe the kind of strength you have in your That is what is going on right now between the federal government and the Ebos. So let's talk about the concept of having an overwhelming presence of security. Uh, you know, in Anambra State ahead of the elections. We have seen uh, the fact that. 34,000, about 34,000 police officers have been deployed. You also have the fact that there's redeployment, rejigging of the security architecture uh, just to ensure that. Do, do you think that this is, you know, a very good approach in our elections generally and in the Anambra even State it, elections? Even if it works, Mercy, even if it, is, it works, it, it, to me it's an elixir or at best what I refer to as philanthropic capitalism. You are just, you're, you're, you're not addressing the issues. You're not getting to the root of the problem. Okay, now you're deploying. Manambra is just one state in the east. Now you're deploying this number. When we are going to have the general elections in 2023, what are you going to do? Where you have Abia, Imo, Boy what are you going to do? Lack of intelligence, lack of thinking, lack of business. What are you going to do? What will happen? So it's not all about force. They say when consciousness power meets powerless conscience, the former laughs less, last, uh, first, but the latter laughs last. That is what is playing out. What will happen when the other eastern states will have elections simultaneously with all the other states in the country? It's not one isolated how can we then start recruiting members now? That's why this is something that you would have stayed up through negotiation. Through negotiation. 
reason there cannot be any other proof that there is hatred. For we are not an evil man, I'm a reverse man. But truth must be told that there is hatred for the evil man. Except not just by, by President Mohammed Buhari. For whatever reason, I don't know. In his case, it's worse. His case is worse. The same way he tried to uh, 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 steal, let me put it that way, steal Umaru Diku, was his, what he did to uh, Onan Bekan. But Ayari, the DCP, is being invited for a crime he committed. They are shielding him. He's being insulated from prosecution. The tempest of justice must not blow fit through. Because that in itself is injustice. Abba Yari is still here. Go through his own He has refused to declare the Fulanese and those headsmen and Boko Haram and Bandits terrorists. Well, he was in a hurry to declare IPOP a terrorist group. Mm. In the is in detention. The world is watching. The world is watching. That's the truth. And that is the game. Otherwise, the evils are ready. Okay. Oba said he was going to visit. They should be allowed to visit. Just, just before we the, just before uh, we I, proceed. Just before we I, proceed. I, you I, know. I, you know uh, so he wanted to visit in the come in prison. They said no. He wants to come to prison. They said no. So there is a mindset. It is premeditated. And that is that is the problem. You you have said that the president hates uh you know, the Igbo people, and uh, that's a very strong that's word. A that uh, that, a that's a very yeah, strong I, word. I, I uh, when you say the president yeah, hates the people, can, no, yes, it is a strong word. And uh, when you say the president hates the people of Igbo, how do you describe that? What instances, what indices can you use to measure hatred? What are that, what because are at the end of the day, let, let's, let's also be realistic. I mean, elections ought to yeah. happen. Elections, uh, we do have a right, you know, to have an elections. Everyone has a right to vote and be voted for. And we cannot take out the fact that during elections, we have elements who would always, I mean, our elections have never been free of violence. So you have people who would always come to, you know, cause violence and cause chaos during the election. So um, are you saying that the deployment of police uh, or security personnel across uh, to Anambra State is an example of hatred by Mr. President to the Igbo nation? If it is, it, it is if it is an example, an example, yes, I'll say yes. Because these are issues, you see, when you say... But should the election, because I want to also understand, but should the yeah. elections, should, well, should, should we have I'm more answer, security? I am answering your... Okay, I, I would allow you... I am answering your question. Yes, I said, if you say an example, I did not say the end, I said an example, I agree. Why I said it could be an example, although you have a plethora of other issues to cross that matter, but why I said it could be an example is because this is one issue that ordinarily would have been staved off if Mr. President had been prudent in his in his, uh, in his, uh, prudent in addressing the issues. It is simple. When you say a man has animosity for a particular person, a particular group, it, has, it is not just one instance. You have, a, you have instances. And I can list them if you give me time. Now, Go ahead, you have time. After, okay, very good. Now, let us look at, I use the issue of the banditry. How many times there was this, is it a low community or so, where the federal government sent military troops and they bombed the community, killing innocent people. At the end of the day, they could not arrest anybody who is an IPOB member, not one. Lies were gone. And that was the end of it. But in the north, what 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 do they do? Even the Sandusta Father's bombing of Sandusta Father is a problem. Yeah, they, they, every time they come up with a special excuse of collateral damage, what of the children? Where you went to bomb in the east, I don't know if it's no wives. That is one aspect of it. 
what development is actually going on in the East? The bridge you are talking about was commenced by Good Luck Jonathan. That is the truth. And if you talk of after the war, you talk of rehabilitation, you talk of integration, you talk, have the Igbos been actually fully reintegrated, rehabilitated? Talk of political appointments. Tell me an Igbo man apart from the constitutional requirement obligation of a ministerial appointment, an Igbo man that is handling a sensitive position in Buhari's government. I want to know why. Okay. Um, I, 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 the list can go on and on. But it would, it would not be... It, it, I think it's not how, right... How has, what, it, it is not yes, right. You, you can actually say that, you know, in terms of appointment, the, you, we've not had, you know, the people being carried along, fairness in appointment and what have you, but it would not be right to say that, uh, you know, that's hatred. Uh, that, that's I, I, please, hatred. please, 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 give me a better definition of hatred. Where well, you deny people their rights. Well, well like I still say, uh, like I still said, because if you if you look at all of the instances that you have mentioned, yes, uh, there's been a lot of conversation about the fact that yes, maybe the president, uh, this current president, is nepotistic, and uh, the issues of not yes, the people of the southeast have been marginalized over time amongst other tribes, not just them. So uh, I don't think that it's enough no, no, for no, us to can, say can, it's can, enough for us to say that that is hatred for the Igbo people. No, no, but I think. That we need to move on. We need. Let's just move on. Mercy, their case. Mercy, their case is worse. Please let us defend. Their case is worse. Let us defend. Theirs is worse. Hmm. Yes, every other region is marginalized, but theirs is worse. Um, the truth. Okay, I, I, I like that. I like that we will just move away from this conversation because we might just be going okay, uh, back okay. and forth with it. But let's also uh, look at um, mm. some other issues. Nadia, the conversation of having a thought force. People are constantly Nigerians are complaining, not people. Nigerians are complaining, saying, "Oh, we're tired of having the two dominant political parties in our, you know, calling the shots in our." different states and at the national level. Now we have uh, ABGA, we have PDP, APC, we have the YPP, the Accord Party, and the Action Alliance and the Zenit Labour Party uh, with some candidates, Chukuma Saludo, uh, Valentine Andiuba, Ifan Yuba, uh, amongst others, Godwin Maduka, uh, you have the Ben Ebita. Uh, these are candidates. How would you rate the strength of this candidate and these parties in the Anambra ship elections come the 6th? Well, I may not give a good analysis because um, I don't know any one of them, apart from what is in public domain. So I cannot tell you this is the best. Of course, you all, you all agree with me that politicians are full of rhapsodies, rhetorics, when they want something. And once they get into office, they do the complete antithesis of their promise. They mutilate all their promises. So I cannot tell you Mr. A is good, Mr. B is good, Mr. C is good. And I do as know them. They are also one of the Anambarians, or they are, they, are, they are part of the Anambarians. So the Anambarians have known them. And that is why um, a reverse man will not get up to go to Anambra State to cast a vote for a, press, a governor, because he hardly knows what is the politics of Anambra State and what the Anambra people need, except he was born and bred there, or except he relocated to that area. So I cannot tell you I'm going to give you and a and, uh, and depth analysis or knowledge of any of the candidates. Not at all. I mean, uh, that will be fortune. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be exceeding my brief. I don't think I can do that. I'm not in the right position to tell you who should be the governor of Anambra State. Um, because the most prominent person there, to me, only two persons, sorry, the prominent people there to me are Oba and uh, uh, Soludo. But let's just say Soludo's performance as CBN governor. But there are two different things altogether. One is purely a professional job, being a CBN governor. This other one is politics. The other one, you're dealing with uh, papers, figures, and so on, the economy, so to speak. This other one, you're dealing with human beings, and it's a broader perspective. So I don't think uh, I'll be in a better position. If you talk about Obama, on the, uh, his performance as a legislator, well, uh, we all know that he, he's, not, he's not an orator, and we all know the circumstances surrounding his election. 
action. Uh, thank God today he has an LLB. So there could be some um, restraining factors. But if you tell me in terms of performance as a governor, if you talk of River State, uh, hey, I can tell you. But not an umbra, an umbra. Uh, We're not talking about performance here. We're talking about, you know, the strength now. Uh, first of all, you look at the, you have mentioned Soludo. Now, now uh, if you also the, talk the party, strength, let's, let's talk see. about, uh, you know, the political party here now. You have Soludo under the ABGAR. And uh, okay, so far, about the, you're talking about have, the parties now. Yes, party as well as the candidates. But you're saying that uh, because you don't know them personally, you can't comment. Let's talk about the party now that these persons are, you know, these parties that are uh, contesting yeah, this okay, election. Okay, uh, if I preach, if, well, I think uh, I might be wrong. But I think the the the, the either the either Abga or um, I don't know who is even the APC candidate. I don't know who is the APC candidate, honestly. But Abga the APC or candidate APC is Andy Uba. APC. Andy Uba is the APC okay, candidate. Andy Uba is very good. Uh, either Abga or APC will, will, will take it. If I have to presage. Abga or APC. I don't. I don't see these other parties. I think these other parties are just there to fill in the numbers. I don't think. So. But Abga or if I say Abga because Soludo is a prominent man. Uh, Abga is the ruling party in, in Anambra State. Uh, if you talk of Anduba, Anduba is also he was also a governor and a prominent man. And um, PDP, no, I don't think PDP will take Anambra State. I don't think so. ZLP, I mean, he's done a good job uh, campaigning, good job campaigning, but I don't see him as somebody that is, uh, as we say, Nigerian parlance, on ground. I don't think so. So, I think it's between Andoba and Chukuma Solubu. Mm. Okay, as we begin to close the conversation down now, let's still stay with security because, I mean, a lot of concerns have been raised as regard uh, security of uh, the elections and those who would participate in the elections. Do you think that with the deployment of uh, all of this security personnel, we will actually, uh, there's a guarantee of security of lives and properties, especially of those who will go out uh, to vote or cast their vote on that particular date? Or what would rather happen? Or will we have a situation where people would not come out? I think we are, we are even discussed this. Uh, uh, in our earlier conversation, uh, the opening preliminary conversation. Uh, I mean, the truth is, yes, you have enough security to protect people that will go out to cast them. No doubt. But how many will have, will be audacious enough to come out to cast people? That is the problem. But that is the security there. But how many? But you will also you're also going to have casualties. Because um the way I see these Biafras, I pop people, they are ready to dare the lion. Mm. But it will not be as high as it would have been without the deployment of this security personnel. But definitely that I think a situation where people are gathered at the polling unit. And from nowhere, there is a bomb. Just to kill those who disobey the seat at home order. I, I foresee such thing happening. It will not assume uh, in dimension of nothing we have assumed within the, in the absence of security men. It will not, but I still see that does. So I can tell you that. And a lot of people will be scared to go out to cast their vote. A lot of people. And don't also forget, it goes beyond casting your vote on that day. It will be whoever went out to cast his vote will be dealt with even later. I don't know if you envisage that kind of scenario. Okay, you, you went out to cast your vote, isn't it? We are going to come for you. So these are the fears that will uh, daunt a lot of people from going out to cast their vote. And that's why it is agreed with Dominosley that the turnout will be abysmal, extremely poor, extremely poor. And I want to also say that in some polling units, you're not going to have voters. You won't find the electorate there. Yeah. 
I, 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 I am quite, I, am, I believe, let me not say quite sure, uh, I strongly believe that in some polling unit, you might not even find a single voter there. You don't find the security map. And no, no number I'm coming out to cut it. So is there anything that can be done? I mean, we still have, today is the 29th, we still have the 30th, uh, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, the 4th, 5th, uh, just before the sixth, is there anything that can really be done to ensure that we have, um, you know, a free, credible, peaceful elections in Anambra come November the sixth? And that's because whatever really happens, the Anambra election would be a reflection of the twenty twenty three elections. So, uh, do you think anything can be done? Yes, yeah, it is. You say it is better late than never. Something can be done. Uh, what Mr. President needs to do is to invite the Igbo leaders, the likes of the former governor who was prevented from entering the country uh, of Anambra State, Ezefe, I think Ezefe, uh, and some other prominent Igbo, Igbo leaders. Invite them to Asuro and also allow them to have access to Inambi Kambu and let Inambi Kambu make a state. Let him address the Igbos, even if it's going to be from detention. Let him address the Igbos. It will go a long way. Our hands is pleading with him and they can. They are not commanding him and they can. They are pleading with him. It was on air. You know? So that will tell you the pain and the canoe is more powerful than all the criminals in the East as of today. His full worship is unprecedented. Not even a Zikwe had that kind of full worship. You know, he's being seen as a matire. So all you need to do is invite these evil leaders, talk to them, plead with them, and also allow them to have access to Inam the Kano. I'm not saying the Inam the Kano might agree or not agree, but that is the first step. That is the first step. And they know what to say to him. Because you can even go. For example, um, if you don't allow this to happen, these are the consequences. Uh, it, it's going to negate the essence of your fight. They, they don't know what to say. They're equals. Once the government takes this step, you'll find out that even the government will begin to have sympathy. But not this just attitude of I don't know. Where will you take it to? Will take it to? So I agree. Let the president invite these people to that and also allow them to have access to them the time. That is the first step. Then they can take it from there. All right. Uh, at this point in time, uh, I'd like to say thank you for being part of the conversation. We do appreciate your thoughts as we look forward to the Anambra governorship elections in Anambra State come the 6th. And uh, we also have reports saying that about 20,000 personnel of the NSCDC have also been deployed. And so it's really going to be <laughs> a, a lot of, you know, uh, presence. Are we going to have a presence of security. <laughs> We're going to have uh, a thank huge you, thank you, thank you. security <laughs> presence uh, during uh, during the elections. But if so, you think you so have, you know, you so want so to continue. Probably it's going, so going to be another NDA. Do you think so? And I'm going to be another NDA. <laughs> so I didn't get that. I didn't get it. No, I'm saying you, you had some thoughts to share uh, while I was making the speech, so I had to take a break for you to continue. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't want, I don't, I was just cutting the, the joke. I said, Anambra will be another NDA where you're going to train military personnel and so on. They should just have another big, another college, another university there in Anambra State. Because with the number of personnel that are being deployed there, oh my God, I think Anambra will be another NDA. So that's, that's, that's okay. But that is not the solution. That remains, I keep saying, that remains an elixir. It's not a solution. Uh, the solution. You must confabulate. You must get your round table to address these issues. That is not the solution. That would be, if they think that that will solve the unnumbered problem, it's a fleeting illusion. It's definitely not going to solve. 
Okay, so at this uh, point, I'd like to say thank you uh, once again for being part of the conversation on Uponabong Kutaria. Thank you so much. We do appreciate your thoughts you, and your time, you. and we look forward to having more of this conversation with you as we proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, do not forget that you can be part of this uh, discussion if you missed out on any of it. Uh, you can follow us on our social media platform on Facebook, we at Plus TV Africa, and on Instagram is at Plus TV Africa, and YouTube, you can find the conversation as well, is at Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. Uh, definitely have a great day. Good morning.